this place to sit, sit down and um, also turn on your headphones because you would like to listen to all the dialogues in all the performances um, or maybe connect it to a speaker uh, so that you are a lot more comfortable during the performances. Uh, it is also a good time for you to quickly run and get some munchies and some refreshments for yourself because it's going to be packed with eight performances um, uh, and it is going to push all the boundaries. Uh, the theater department at Neve uh, every year, uh, specifically with this batch, we have made sure that we push the boundaries. Um, starting with the year five, like uh, the final year of uh, PYP, this batch had created a play called Monkey Trial. Um, grade six, they did Demeter and Persephone, the Greek ensemble performance. Grade seven, they created two very powerful realistic performances. And in grade eight, they dived in deep comedy. This year, uh, with the kind of inquiry which we all have got, the students are gonna push the emotional boundary uh, with the thoughts, with the issues which they feel is important. Uh, they may make you feel a little uncomfortable at times, but that's the job of theater artist in this world. At the time of pandemic, we all theater practitioners, students, teachers are dealing with this one dichotomy. If we record the theater performances, does it still remain theater? Does it become film? And that's one dichotomy which none of us, we teachers, students, or performers have response to. We had prepared this performance uh, thinking that we will get an opportunity to share it live with you, uh, which was supposed to be today, but with the current scenario, uh, it seems difficult. And uh, today, what we're going to share with you is a recording which were done three weeks back before they went for spring break. So there may be loads of challenges, there are production errors, um, blocking errors, which has definitely improved a lot. And yesterday, the draft which I got to see with them was a lot more closer to their own personal artistic intentions which they wanted to achieve. Uh, I would request each one of you to, uh, after every performance, we will be providing you two minutes time to write your feedback. Uh, because each of these uh, performance have a very different treatment uh, and it's their own personal inquiry. So uh, do spend that two minutes time to write down your feedback. With this, I would request uh, all the grade 10 drama students to turn on your video so that your audience gets to see. Uh, and quickly, before we start, uh, before we pass it back to Devansh, students, I must tell you, uh, it's have been, it has been an absolute delight for me as a drama teacher teaching you for last six years, starting with you in grade four and now seeing the strong messages which we're going to send to this world uh, as DP students, as individuals uh, who, gonna, who understand the power which uh, art as a medium for communication provides us. So with this, over to you, Devansh. Greetings to everyone present here and welcome to our grade 10 drama culmination. We, the grade 10 students, have spent the past few months preparing for this very day as we devised, blocked and rehearsed a series of eight plays that we would finally be performing for you today. Each play will be performed by either one or two of our drama students and will be based on social issues close to the hearts of its performers. From the Kashmir Article 370 dispute and the Farmers Bill protest to gender inequality and marital rape within households, these are conflicts that are not fought against using guns and weapons, but words, laws, and social awareness. We thus hope that our performances will be able to create some social awareness around these issues. Before we commence the show, I would sincerely request everyone to please fill in the feedback forms at the end of each performance so that you can give us your opinions on them. So sit back, relax, and we really hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Greetings everyone. My name is Pranav Gupta and over the next few minutes, you will all be watching my play on a problem which I feel is important to address and which has only grown in importance and relevance over the past year. I've always found that I have been drawn to theater that is not only challenging for me as an actor, but which challenges society as a whole. 
Today's play is undoubtedly relevant to each of us here today. And I hope that even though you will be watching a recording of my performance, that the play will challenge your perspective and possibly even drive you to change our society. I hope you enjoy. Hello? Ashweta. Yeah, yeah, it's all so fine. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no. No, that's all right. Yeah, it's not too much of a problem, I guess. Listen, I'll, I'll speak to you later, okay? Hmm, yeah, okay. See you. ये सारे को भी क्लासिफाई तो ताला तेरी ने एपिसोड और ट्रांसफर के साथ है आप और हरक तेरी तरह इस हफ्ते भी एक बड़ा ही जबरदस्त एपिसोड हम आपने लेकर आए हैं कुछ इतने तेरी गाने हैं इसमें नब्बे के दशक के यानी कि नाइंटी से और कुछ बड़े ही लोगों के अंदर में इससे भी आपके साथ बातें जाएंगी I read about how you're one of the finest divorce lawyers in all of North India, and I thought that maybe. Hey Siri, uh, delete recording and start another one. Hello, sir. Um, my name is Amita Shivasta, and I'm a housewife in Mumbai. Now, so this might just seem a bit out of context to you, but. I think it's really the only way I can really simply explain what's happened to me. Um, Sir, Jadu Teri Nazar has just played on the radio. I love that song. I listened to it day and night, every single day when I was in school. Before I went to school, after I came back. Hell, I even listened to it while I was coming back from school. But sir, the reason this is also important is I've just realized what two lines. That song me. Tu ha kar, ya na kar. Tu ha kar, ya na kar. I've just realized how how stupid I was. How I just let him. So my husband Nikhil Shivastav, he came back from work last Wednesday, and he he told me that he had had a bad day at work. That he was. That he was pissed off somehow, and so I was tired. I I was tired, so I went to bed. I left him, and I went to bed. And he woke me up later that night, and he kissed me. He kissed me, and I kissed him back. But then he started moving his hands, and he started doing other things, and so I told him I was I I told him I was tired. I told him that I didn't want to, and he he ignored me. So I said I said no, and he acted like I wasn't there, like my like my consent somehow didn't matter. I said I said no, and he ignored me. And so the whole time, just two lines were going through my head. कर या ना कर दुहा कर या ना कर सर 
सर आई होप टू गॉड दिस मैसेज गेट्स टू यू बिकॉज़ आई डोंट नो व्हाट आई कैन डू आई डोंट नो व्हाट माय फैमिली कैन डू व्हाट द कॉप्स विल डू इफ आई गो टू देम आई डोंट नो व्हाट माय हस्बैंड विल डू आई रीड अबाउट आई रीड अबाउट यू सर आई हैव रीड अबाउट हाउ यू आर वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट डिवोर्स लॉयर्स एंड आई जस्ट थॉट दैट मे बी यू कुड हेल्प मी समहाउ प्लीज हेल्प मी हेल्प मी समहाउ she was the din send that recording to the lawyer she identified she spoke about all of these things spoke about her emotions what she truly experienced that night and yet she didn't send that voice voice note out it's not like the lawyer could have done anything anyways because as per indian the indian penal code of 1860 marital rape is not punishable by indian law what that means is that a man that forces his wife his spouse into sex cannot be punished even if proven that he did so that was amita shivastav's real problem even if she didn't know it yet and that i believe is one of the ipc's greatest failures one of our greatest failures as citizens of india we have the power to change this it's even possible that this is happening in our direct communities but we must ask ourselves how do we make sure that our gen- the generation that pres- that follow us do not behave like this how do we make sure that we can clear a path for justice to people for people like amita shivastav that is our responsibility each and every one of us thank you please use these 2 minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on did on the slide Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance. Therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you. Good evening my name is Noor and my name is Sanya Our piece deals with the conflict around article 370 and the aftermath of its abrogation This complex issue is political and controversial but it's often placed out of reach We hope that this piece makes the issue more accessible We have chosen the form of verbatim theater which means that all the dialogues have been taken from primary sources We have then worked to weave this together to create a cohesive narrative A disclaimer COVID-19 made a difficult grade even more challenging and the unprecedented circumstances led to us being unable to film our final performance. 
The piece you are about to witness was intended as a draft. Our artistic intention or purpose for this piece was to create an unbiased and balanced piece of verbatim theater, accurately portraying the conflict around the abrogation of Article 370 and pushing the audience to form their own opinion on the issue. We would really appreciate it if after our performance, you would take a minute to give us feedback, keeping our artistic intention in mind, as it will help us better ourselves and our work in the future. We hope you enjoy this piece.
discourse which is totally separatist. They see a legitimacy in the voice of militants, which in my opinion is going to be very dangerous. However, militant separatism is one of the key reasons why India's government took this step. I think we should bring in a political table here. So, that, that is, nothing too long though. Minorities have been 
decimated. And now the country has stopped counting as minorities in its census. India, on the other hand, the Muslims are constituting 10% of the population and independence constitutes 14% today. But it's not just about demographics or numbers. All shades of India have flourished. I would have wanted to be here with my party leader, Yusuf Taliba, but he's under house arrest. It is almost three months now. There is no public transport there. The shops remain closed. Schools and colleges are open, technically. No students or teachers. The hospital, shortage of medicines. If this is human rights, then I'm sorry. This is not the sort of integration that this constitution promises, and that a violation. For years, you've done nothing. And then one fine day, you just erase Jane from the street. And then transition. Transition. Um, what if we bring in a civilian again? I mean, it does build tension easily. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy. क्या पॉलिटिकल गेम खेला है कैसे किया अंदर कुछ अलग की स्टोरी चल रहा है तो लोगों की एक्सपेक्ट नहीं था कि इतना जल्दी इतना कुछ हो सकता पहले हमारा टीवी को बंद करवाते हो मीडिया बंद करवाते हो फिर हमारा टेलीफोन को बंद करवाते हो फिर हम फिर आप हमसे पूछते हो कि हमारे पास अभी क्या है हमारे पास अभी ऑक्सीजन है अगर बंद कर सकते थे तो यह भी होगा so, do you think we're moving to some type of closing? I think we should definitely close on an emotional high. Right, so that makes it the perfect time to bring it to Farooq Abdullah's last year interview. It's also relevant because of the former CEO of JNT, who is really in both of the issues. Right, but having Farooq Abdullah's interview on its own would seem a bit biased, wouldn't it? Because it's only showcasing one side. So, we bring in Modi?
जैसे पहले सीएम होते थे वैसे ही आगे आपके मुख्यमंत्री होंगे आपके सीएम होंगे What are they talking about? How much are they going to fool the people of India by saying everything is hunky dory? Today, if you see the newspaper, you will see the militancy has gone down 50%. Bullshit. So what are they trying to tell you? जब धरती का स्वर हमारा जम्मू कश्मीर फिर एक बार विकास की नई ऊंचाइयों की बात करके पूरा विश्व को आकर्षित करने लगेगा. Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Tanaya Mehta, and today I'm going to be um, presenting a performance which is about a girl who has a sm who has small dreams and ambitions. She's restricted from an important right that could change her understanding of the world. My play questions whether the lack of education means the lack of human rights. So, due to the current circumstances, this piece is still a draft that I recorded at home, but I hope that you enjoy. It. Thank you. such boring dry curly hair 
um, also, uh, the carnival is happening today and I have to go. And if I'm going today, then I have to get that new dress which I see in the market from up. It looks so nice with the golden earrings and the necklace and the bangles. It would be so nice. And also, Bhaiya was telling me about how he had got to school and he had learned about our tradition. And um, he was telling me how he had learned about our tradition. And on our tradition, I found that it was so interesting that he could learn about traditional clothes and the languages and everything. If I go to school, I will also learn all these things and I'll get new uniforms and everything. I'll ask Papa about it when he comes home from work today. Oh, it looks like he's come. I better go get the door and better go get his water. I'm coming. Coming. Came to Papa. Papa, welcome home. Papa, I have to tell you about what happened today. Papa, you remember those birds which we had seen the other day? They were sitting on my window and you know what they were doing? They were looking at me. Papa, you know there's a carnival happening today and I have to get that new dress which we had seen in the market with Mama. It was so pretty. And remember Papa, uh, Yesterday, Nalini auntie was wearing these really, really, really pretty colored uh, earrings, golden earrings and a golden necklace. If I had those, maybe I would look pretty too. And if I go to the carnival and I wear pretty clothes, people won't think that I don't go to school or something. But, but mama, please. <laughs> What's so wrong with this? I I don't understand what's so wrong. Oh, Bhaiya was telling me about how he had learned about traditional clothes at school and I found... But, but I just want to go to the carnival. But, oh please, this is so unfair. Why are you... I don't understand what's so wrong. I... Yes, I should do this. 
only chance. You should be quiet though. Where did he keep the money? my father what if I get lost what if I get injured what if something happens to me no even though this may be my only chance I can't do this I, I can't change anything what happens when I come back what happens then no I, I can't do this I have to put the money back I can't steal I can't change anything I can't change my life no What do I know about school? What do I know about education? What do I know about anything at all? What do I know about freedom? I can't change my identity. I can't change my faith. घर घर में अभियान चलाओ, बेटी बचाओ, बेटी पढ़ाओ. घर घर में अभियान चलाओ बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ घर घर में अभियान चलाओ बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ घर घर में अभियान चलाओ बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you.
Hi, it's me again. The performance that you will be witnessing now is going to be on an issue that you would perhaps not have previously thought of as an issue. It is based on two events and specifically on the aftermath of the suicide of one of India's most beloved actors. I won't reveal too much though. Hope you enjoy my performance. Fourteenth June, two thousand twenty, is the day when beloved Bollywood actor Sushant Singh Rajput died. Having been loved by many, Rajput's death certainly came as a shock to his plethora of fans across India. Death by suicide. It was called by the Mumbai police when they first came and investigated the incident. But little did everybody know at the time that Sushant Singh Rajput's suicide was no mere suicide. Bollywood star Sushant Singh Rajput has died in Mumbai. He was found hanging at his residence today. There have been several reactions that have come in from the Bollywood fraternity. Rajput's death comes days after the death of his former manager Disha Salil, who jumped off the 14th story of a public welfare building in Malal, Mumbai. The police are still investigating the incident and uh, will try to keep you abreast of the very latest developments. Rajput played incredible role in sports biopics such as MS Dhoni, The Untold Story and went on to star in commercially successful film, films such as Kedarnath. Earlier, he starred in action thriller, Byomkesh Bakshi. He was immensely loved, intensely popular, and he's been found dead in his Mumbai home today. He's been found hanging. Uh, let's now go over to uh, Purva Chitnis and Rohit Khilani. Rohit, over to you first. You're right outside his home right now. Any details you can share with us? details as of now. Uh, the ambulance had just arrived here and we're awaiting some confirmation from the Mumbai police. Uh, he was found hanging as you had said earlier and uh, there was a huge crowd here. You know, we're trying to stay away, you know, trying to keep social distancing in mind. And you know, the way the way things are going out here is definitely not the right way because uh, you know, people are crowding here and coronavirus is still very much around and the Mumbai police is having quite a tough time trying to control this crowd that had just gathered here. So to whoever's watching this telecast, you should remember not to come here and crowd this place because uh, as I said earlier, coronavirus is still very much around. Uh, I can't show you what's there on the other side, but I can confirm to you that as I said earlier, Mumbai police is having quite a tough time trying to control the crowd. Uh, speaking of Sushant, what a successful career. Bollywood absolutely shocked by this incident. So many tweets from Farhan Akhtar, Ritesh Deshmukh, Akshay Kumar, absolutely shocked by this incident. Uh, you know, so this obviously opens up a huge debate on depression and, you know, uh, reaching out to people. So all in all, no details as of now as to how it happened, why, and everybody's shocked. And the Mumbai police will answer a lot of questions regarding his death very soon. While many were blaming the young actor's death, a lot of questions regarding his suicide began coming up. Who or what was responsible for motivating the young actor to commit suicide? Was it uh, grief? Was it professional rivalry? Was it grief at the death of his former manager Disha Salyut? Was it family matters? A lot of these questions remain unanswered until Sushant Singh Rajput's father, Mr. K. K. Singh filed an FIR against an individual, leading to one of the greatest media trials against a single person in the history of the Indian press.
प्रिया मेरे बेटे सुशांत को लंबे समय से जल पिलाया करती थी वो उसकी हथियारी है कृपया जल्द से जल्द प्रिया और उनकी सहयोगी को गिरफ्तार करे और उनको सजा दिलाए What is a 28-year-old woman at the center of India's most centralized media talent scene? What is her side of the story? Joining me tonight is Riya Chakraborty. Riya, you heard my introduction. Sushant Singh pa Rajput's father said earlier today that you poisoned his son, that you murdered his son. What's your reaction to that? What do you have to say about that? I mean, it's extremely hurtful that someone, it's extremely hurtful that someone who's going through a loss this big as a mind does not understand what this could be doing to me. I loved his son. I, I took care of his son and it's just beyond me to understand that is there no humanity? I loved his son. I, I took care of his son and if you don't like me as his girlfriend, at least now that he's passed, respect his love for me, if not mine for him. Uh, yeah, you know, in a sense, you can put down Sushant Singh and Rajput's family, their character to their grief. But the, what the real issue right now is, is that today, earlier today, a senior BJP leader said that the anti-terror agency, the NIA, should be investigating your role in this case. As I've said before, we've already got the CBI, the ED, the Narcotics Bureau, and I mean, I think there were similar cases when there were fugitives, or as Swara Bhaskar had said, even Kasab wouldn't have been treated like this. What do you have to say today, you're 28, when you're being investigated by three central agencies? What's your reaction to that? extremely difficult. Me and my family go through scrutiny every day. Today, there was a mob at my doorstep. My father was touched, he was harassed, he was hit. My watchman was beaten up inside the premises of our society. They're not just hurting me and my family, but everyone around us. Tomorrow, the residents of my society might just ask us to leave. What are you doing to this family? I would like to ask everybody this question. What are you doing to this family? We're doing all our duties as law-abiding citizens, but you're treating us like we're a bunch of terrorists? My father served this country for 25 years as an army officer, and you're treating this family like we're terrorists when all we did was love a boy. I have immense faith in God and the judiciary. I believe I will get justice. Even though a lot of things are being said about me in the electronic media, I will refrain from commenting upon them, upon the advice of my lawyers, as a matter of Judas. Satya me vijayate. The truth shall prevail.
statement by uh, Sushant Singh Rajput's family lawyer, Mr. Prakash Singh. Uh, you know, we are coming in that video is not much of what she is saying, but how she is looking. I have never seen uh, Rhea in that uh, dress her, and I don't think she would have ever worn that kind of dress before, this kind of white salwar suit. So this video was more just to show that, you know, she is a simple woman and all that and uh, white salwar suit and to say I want truth, that is saying nothing at all. If she really wanted to say something to the Indian people, she should have said why she blocked Susan, why did she uh, leave the house so suddenly, why did she not uh, tell his family members of the treatment he is undergoing and the illness he is experiencing. Hello and welcome to this edition of The Nation Wants to Know. Uh, we've resumed The Nation Wants to Know and I promised last week when we interviewed the ISRO chief that we would make these uh, regular conversations. And the person I'm looking forward to speaking to today, let me welcome her right on top. Actor, director, producer, Kangana Rono. She speaks her mind. Uh, she's unafraid of the powerhouses in the industry and uh, I'd spoken to Kangana a few days after Sushant Singh Rajput's most unfortunate demise and she had put out a video in which she was livid. So I had spoken to Kangana and asked her, you know, why don't you speak to me in more detail about it? But she said that she had been too affected, that she was not in the right state of mind to give a longer interview. I'm glad you're here now, Kangana. So first of all, thank you. Uh, let's get straight to the point. Uh, let's cut the chase. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So for me, like I do a lot of interviews talking about myself, my work, but you know, when I'm, but you know, I'm not talking about myself now. I'm talking about work, my somebody else who I identified with. So you know, since I'm not talking about myself, it, and I'm talking about somebody else, and such a huge and unfortunate event has taken place, it puts me in a position where I'm very vulnerable and emotional. You know, so. Uh, Very vulnerable and emotional. Uh, so, so I'm gonna make sure that you know whatever I put out there, it's not my opinion. It's all out there in the public domain for everyone to see. And uh, it seems to me, and so honestly, when you first asked me about this whole incident, I just thought, you know, what is there to say anymore? You know, I mean, it's all out there in the public domain for every, anybody and everybody to see. Right? But you know, I feel that some people are very conveniently trying to ignore what the public domain has to offer, you know? Because, and I feel, and okay, I feel that it is murder. And because I do feel that there has been some bit of abetment of suicide involved. So for me, I feel that it has been murder since day one, and I still believe that it is murder.
what you witnessed were just a few of the many interviews and state conducted and statements made in relation to this case. And by now I'm sure that you must be quite confused because I certainly am. Who really was Sushant Singh Rajput behind that lively face and that cheerful smile? And what exactly motivated this young and talented actor to commit suicide? On one end of this debate, there is the villainous portrayal of Riyad Chakraborty and who has been constantly blamed as being solely responsible for the death of Sushant Singh Rajput. And on the other end of the spectrum, there is uh, Karan Johar and Aditya Chopra and an entire mafia of pro-nepotism Bollywood big shots who people like Kangana Rano have constantly blamed as being responsible for Sushant Singh Rajput's suicide. So, in reality, I'm not really sure what really happened there because the media has been taking all these sides of the debate and blowing it completely out of proportion to make a stew that is so distasteful now that the, the audience no one no longer wants to have, consume any bit of it anymore. The Sushant Singh Rajput suicide case had a media trial for sure. But was this media trial really fruitful? Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you. As Vanessa mentioned, our inquiry was based around emotion, but there's been one emotion in particular, which I feel has been neglected, joy or humor. Whatever happened to some uh, good old fashioned comedy? Well, uh, for the performance which you're about to see, we'll, uh, it'll be all about that. But what was my goal for this performance? What did I want you as my audience members to feel as I perform? Well, my inquiry was centered around understanding whether art is required to inspire social change. Why can't it be funny just for laughter's sake? Especially during these turbulent COVID times, shouldn't there be something that acts as an escape from our troubled world? My intention was to answer these questions throughout my inquiry. Thank you and do enjoy. Sorry, bear with me.
paper, scissors, shoot! Uh, Your Honor, I won again? Surely uh, we can decide on a sentence now. Oh, go, go, go! Must have been a slip of my tongue, did I say best of three? It's first to three, so there's one more game. Okay? Ready? I can't lose this. Three, two, one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Your Honor, I won. Uh, we should decide a sentence. Boys, that's unfair. He's cheating us in late for Your Honor. Listen, uh, I do believe what the cop is saying is right. He did win fair and square. So we will be deciding on a sentence. Cop, what do you feel is uh, beneficial for this case? He's asking me. Uh, five years in jail, sir. It's perfect for a pickpocketing crime. Sounds good. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, court is adjourned. Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you. Greetings, my name is Mudit, and the issue that is discussed in my piece is one that recently occurred, however, was already forgotten in a couple of months. We will be looking at how the media plays a huge role in impacting one's perspective. I knew that I would also use this rare opportunity to present something that I deeply care about, and while ideating, I was sure to go ahead with the uh, broad topic of focusing on political issues that we face in our country that are often ignored. And I realize that this is one area that I care about. However, I'm unable to speak up and voice my opinion on national issues and how change should be brought in. This was the perfect opportunity to spread awareness as it was the first step to change. Um, in the end, although the performance is played through an online medium, I hope the objective of conveying the message is achieved. Also note that this was a tech run performance and not the final piece. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed. Symbolically, to register our anger, protest, and resistance against the new farm laws that have come up, we have put the Nishant Sahib, as well as the farmer's flag. However, this is no way of handling such an agitation. This is a revolution, sir. It is a revolution, and if they are not going to understand the seriousness of this matter, then trust me, it will define the next political structure of this whole geopolitics of this entire country. No, it is going to be really sad for them, because... If you take away the land from the farmers, then what will happen? Suicides, death. And well, there we have it, Deep Sidhu, a famous Indian actor live on Facebook, admitting that he was in fact the one who hoisted the farmer's flag on an empty pole by the Red Fort. But why in the first place do we have such protests? What was wrong with the bills that were earlier passed? What are the farmers take on the situation? What is the government saying? I'm your news anchor for today on Worldwide News, and I will attempt to clarify the context of the situation for you. Recently, the government has come up with three ordinances related to agriculture which has infuriated the farmers of the nation. There have been visible protests in the state of Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana with the raising slogans of Kisan Bachao, Mandi Bachao. 
Let us see what this means to the farmers who are, mid, who are in the middle of a protest in the streets of Western Uttar Pradesh. For this, we will be having Mr. Amanpreet Singh, a young farmer who grows his crops near the valley west of the state. <laughs> The biggest issue is that the Indian government has brought in these three agricultural bills. Now all these three bills go against us farmers and favor these corporate companies. Therefore, we demand that the government announce all these three bills. And the Modi government says that we are to benefit from these bills. But on a meeting on the 13th of January, we had asked them who even brought up these bills. No answer, nothing at all. We have problems with the bills that we have been telling the central government, but they have not been doing anything to resolve the issue. So to put pressure on the government, we have moved these protests to from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana to mainland Delhi to put pressure on the government. And not even 2% of us have gathered as of yet. There are five people coming from my village in Mohali. Five to 10, that is the number of people coming. And people will come in shifts. One will be here for 10 days and then the other group will come. Till when, we, till when will we be here, you ask? Until Modi ji agrees. Modi ji, if you're watching this, look at the state at which your country is in right now. When we came here from Pakistan in 1947, we worked hard to make our land cultivable. Then we made our own land, produced our own crops. If any of the farmers that you see here today have any money, it is because of their hard work. The government hasn't given any of it. And at the rate we are going at, our salaries are going to remain less than half. And our families are not going to be able to sustain themselves with the basic necessities of life. Let me tell you that much. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Amanpreet. Now we will be having a short break, after which we will be looking at the other side of the story and with more information regarding the issue at hand. Well, since this is the break, I would like to take this opportunity to ask you whether this issue really even matters to you. Because frankly speaking, I don't see it having any impact on me. Rather, it just seems like another conflict that may or get, may, may not get resolved in the future. But there's always a reason as to why things occur the way they do. This might sound like a cliche, but there's always that small message obtained through every situation regardless of its magnitude. Now, why, and in, and in this case, why these shouldn't really impact me, or any of you for that matter, I received that message. The message was here was that protest or conflict in general was very healthy, in that the protest has been a huge medium through which the farmers are able to voice their opinion on how they want change or why they want change in the first place. This is what I, as a viewer, would take away from the words of the hardworking farmer. Thank you so much for listening to me, and you may now return to your daily news. Thank you and we are back after the break and now we will be looking at the other side of the story. What is the government doing in response to such agitations caused? For this we will be moving on to the hearing of Mr. Krishnamurti Rao, a politician in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party and the recent passing of the farm bills. Good morning to all. Today, I'll be talking about the farmers' protest and why the bills that the Modi government has passed 
will benefit the majority. Now the first two bills allow for corporates to procure commodities cheap from the farmers and hoard them and create whatever shortage they require in order to sell their product at exorbitant prices. In this case, they can directly engage with the farmers and without any government intervention. Now let's talk about the farmers. Since 2014, we have been initiating changes in the government policies aimed at empowering the farmers. The crop insurance scheme was changed to make it look more farmer friendly. There are other efforts like the Kisan Rail as well. Let's talk about the Pradhan Mantri Grand Sadat Yojana. This is one when the road connectivity improves, this enables the produce of the of the farmers to reach distant places. Like I said, there are effort, other efforts like the Kisan Rail as well. Now, in an attempt to appeal to these agitating farmers, Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi ji has, has asserted that minimum support prices was there, is there, and will remain in the future. And the poor for the ration will continue. Now, the minimum support, support prices are nothing but the product price set by the government of India so that one can directly purchase from the farmers and they are able to sustain themselves. Now, India is very proud of the contributions of the Sikhs. This is a community that has done so much for the nation. The words and blessings of the Guru Sahib are so precious. Thank you. Yes, I'm the same person from the break. And I'm sorry, I won't take more than a minute, I promise you. But what exactly do you notice here? On one hand, we have the government saying, on one, one hand, we have the farmers saying that the bill should be announced as it goes against them and favors these corporate companies. But on the other hand, we have the government saying that no, these these bills, the passing of the bills will definite, definitely benefit both parties. Now, this, this is what brings in the huge clash of opinion. But what I feel is that the government needs to work on war footing to ensure better agricultural techniques for all farmers, especially ones with smaller holdings. This is where the government needs to spend money instead of subsidizing other inputs across the board for all farmers. And uh, lastly, it's also time to take a note, take a serious note of why there are so many suicides amongst farmers. Despite the freebies and subsidies and heavily, uh, heavily free and heavily subsidized inputs, um, why, why do so many farmers remain in uh, debt and fail to prosper? It is time some serious thought is given into this, this issue. Thank you. Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you.
Why must I always sit at this one spot every day, all day, waiting, as if I'm a play toy, a doll for someone to play with, as if I have no life of my own, like my purpose is just to wait, to wait for one person to return. All day, I sit at this one spot. I must wake up every day in the morning. I must get myself ready. I must do my hair, wear my clothes. For what? To sit at this one spot every day and do nothing. Of course, my husband works. He goes out in the morning and comes back later in the day. He does work, he does something. He must do something to earn appreciation, to get money for his job. At least he does that. And all I must do is sit at this one spot all day with nothing to do. I've gotten my education. I can play a little bit of music. I've done all I need to do. And now if I were to do anything else, I should not. Then when my husband comes back from work, he comes in and complains to me, complains to me about what else I could have done, what else I needed to do in the day, when all he lets me do is sit at this one spot. If he sees me doing anything else, there'll be more than just complaints. And then he comes home and complains to me about, about what else I should have done, how I could have been nicer. When I can't, I, I don't even see him. He acts as if, as if he's nice to me. This is insane. And now apparently I am too.
are you the only person close enough for loud enough to hear me for me to hear you why am i the only person who had all these problems with the way i was living my life the way i was treated by everyone else was i the only one i wasn't there are so many others that also feel this way i'm i'm not alone you're here too but what about these others do they can they say anything else i i did say something and, and this is where i am now all these people and this there's even worse outside they think they're so superior and we are so inferior that since we are so small that our thoughts are a crime we don't matter as much so we are left here alienated in this one place all alone no one else except you you've been here with me you've stayed but why, why are you here of all people you are the sanest person i know and yet you're sent to these lunatic asylums you are sent here it's not right it should have never been this way it makes no sense all we wish for is is a purpose something to do for ourselves but the men in the family the fathers the husbands the brothers can all they can all label us as insane send us here it's not right it should have never been this way i i should have never said anything If this is where I am now, I can't be sure it's better than where I was. And then when he comes home from his work, he complains to me. Complains to me what I uh, and what I could have done in the day, what else I should have done. But he doesn't let me do any of it. And then he says that I should have been nice to him, but I haven't even seen him in the day. He acts as if he's nice to me. Good day, sir. any of it you say i should study or something i cannot you just obey me from reading any books while you go out and do something i i sit on this chair all day and wait for you you must let me do something you cannot you cannot shout at me for doing something you don't let me do
insane? I'm not insane! Am I insane? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sanala Steiger. My performance was about a woman in the 1860s who felt like she didn't have a purpose in life for herself and went insane thinking about it. Although just a tech run and not in costume, I hope that through this piece, you saw that smaller voices should be heard, even if they are oppressed by larger ones. Thank you. And please tell me what you thought about it in the feedback form shared. Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to this performance. Therefore, please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you. Um, dear audience members, thank you for staying with us till this point. That was a wonderful performance we just watched, but the one you will witness now will definitely be different. Now we'll be taking you to Malabar Hills. Pay attention because this may be the only time many of you will get to go there. So this is a realism performance. A realism performance gives a voice to the common man. It is accessible to everyone walking the street. And this was our intention, to make the performance relatable and to stir an emotional response in each one of you. And our performance is just that. It is so relatable to the people watching the common man walk across the street in their cars. Enjoy.
this time, so my mother takes me back. Oh yeah, this I know, I know, I'm sorry. I don't know what got into you all of a sudden. Skipping school? Not school, it's off to school. Oh, you are in no position to be making arguments. Please, 
course, you will talk to the teachers involved, get it under control. You know how people can talk, even especially in a small community like ours. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Yes.
this performance as much as we did putting it up for you. While we would have preferred to have presented our performance to you live, the restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic required us to revert back to a previous draft of our performance. Nonetheless, we found the process rewarding and learned a great deal from this experience. We created this performance at the start of the unit to inspire change on an issue that is only growing in prevalence in India, domestic violence. Several months in lockdown around the world has triggered a more concealed pandemic, the shadow pandemic, which refers to the huge surge of domestic violence cases against women. Through our exploration of the genre of realism this unit, we aim to portray the issue of domestic violence from the lesser heard perspective of the victim. We hope to have struck a chord with you emotionally. Please use these two minutes between performances to fill up the feedback form presented on the slide. Please scan the barcode using your phone or simply type out the link into your phone. The link to the Google form has been put up on the top of the slide, so please refer to that. Please also refer to the artistic intention displayed on the slide. This was the performer's goal in regards to his performance, therefore please keep this in mind while providing feedback. Thank you.
And this brings us to the end of our show. We hope you enjoyed watching our performances and maybe even learned something new about the various complex issues they discussed, as these are the problems that are the most prevalent in India that plague our country and adversely affect its people. Creating these plays over the past few months has been an exciting and impactful journey for us. And we hope that watching our plays has taken you through a similar journey from simply knowing about the issues to understanding them in depth and significance within the Indian context. We hope that our plays have taken you through a journey that was not only informative, but also emotional and thought provoking as drama is not only meant to inspire change through social awareness, but also impact the minds and hearts of its viewers by telling them a story. Before we conclude the show, I would like to take this opportunity to thank on behalf of grade 10, our one and only drama teacher, Vineet sir, as he not only helped us create this wonderful exhibition and all the performances in it, but also supported and guided us through our entire MYP drama journey, which is unfortunately now about to come to an end. And lastly, but definitely not the least, we would like to thank you, the audience members, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here and watch our performances. You are being here really mattered to us, even if it is virtually, and we really hope that you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Great 10. Uh, we have come to the end. Thank you so much, audience, for being with us. Uh, it is absolutely, uh, while we were watching this performance, and lo loads of these spots, I felt, gosh, we could have performed for you live. They have actually improved a lot from what you just saw. The sound and all these issues were actually sorted out by yesterday's rehearsal. But I think uh, one thing which we all have learned is the show must go on. And we just wanted to share with you our inquiry. Thank you for being there with us and being patient during all those sound glitches and uh, uh, background noise. But uh, grade 10, could you all turn on your videos? And I mean all the grade 10 students. Guys, you all have made us so proud as teachers. And uh, we are sorry that th we couldn't do a final proper uh, graduation function for MYP. We had planned some surprise for you today. We couldn't do that. But I think you got your journey, um, your learning really inspired each one of us, each teacher in at Neve. And uh, I think the way you all have gracefully uh, accepted this change and come and done this as an online performance. Really, this is a year where I think we are really making some strong individual for the changing world, which uh, is going to be there and we don't know about, but you guys are so strong. You are uh, our strength. And that's why we teachers really love the work which we do. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, audience. Can we all together unmute and say thank you to our audience, our parents, our teachers for being there with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you all tomorrow morning. Uh, 